Welcome, and for me is a Samsung S25 FE, and today I will be showing you how you can go through the setup process of this device. So when you boot it up for the first time, you should be presented with the same screen that you can see on my end, and all we need to do here is click on this button, and then find our desired language from the list. Now for me it already selected English, but God forbid I would ever want to be considered as a United Kingdom, so let's find anything. You know what, I think I prefer to be considered as a South African um, English. So anyway, moving on, we have connect to mobile network. This step is optional, you don't need to do that, and you can do so by just inserting a SIM card. I'm gonna click on next, and next presents us with, for your review, so we have user agreement, uh, and well that's about it i agree to the end user agreement so yeah that's all we need to agree to you can also tap right here and read the actual thing that you're agreeing to from there move on to the next page which allows you to uh, set up easily with another device which basically if you grab your device just to kind of showcase this if i press next it shows up with this so it allows me to set up this device using my old one so it would copy the data from my old device to this one but it only copies the cloud stored data so basically any data that samsung can hoover up for themselves as well that's what they're gonna let you copy anyway we're gonna set it up manually without doing that because i believe you should always have if you have any data to back up you should back it up manually to your computer and have full control over it instead of doing it to the cloud where some kind of corporation is dictating how and when you can have access to this data that doesn't seem like it's backed up now because you don't really have control over it now do you so i personally prefer to do it that way and that's what i'll always recommend doing now here we can connect to wi-fi network i do want to point out one thing there might be a slight difference in your end i can skip this actually but in your case you might not be able to do so samsung typically forces you to sign into Wi-Fi network if the device is brand new, but this device was already reset and unpacked, set up before, so it doesn't do that no matter what. Uh, but for you, if it's brand new, it might force you to do that. Now, uh, with that in mind, when I'm trying to skip the signing into Wi-Fi, I also have an inserted SIM card, so I have no connection. And Samsung uh basically goes and tries to uh, give us bullshit uh, information right here which is blatant lies and uh, stupid kind of uh, info in general so let's go over this I i'd like to just take a piss on that because it's it, it's just dog shit that, that's what it is so um skip wi-fi setup wi-fi is required to set up an eSIM. oh wow they actually added some important information that actually matters so yeah they're telling us that we can uh internet is required to have eSIM which it is for some reason don't really know why but you do need it so if you're planning to use an eSIM which is the QR code you do need to connect to network next we have connect to the internet so we need internet to connect to internet well no shit tell me more maybe you will tell me that water is wet moving on install software updates now this is a legitimate one cool Last one is use device protection features. Now that is an absolute bullshit and I'm gonna prove it. Skip. Uh, one thing that I should also add is what this page is supposed to tell you is that you won't have uh, date and time set automatically, be able to log into Google uh, without internet and uh, that your device won't be able to restore apps and data and get software updates. Which one of those was mentioned but not the other. Uh, and here would be the date and time that is not set automatically now because there's no internet connection and here's the device's protection but i thought we can't have that without internet what gives but you know maybe it's just a fluke maybe i can't set it up let's go with the pattern oh continue oh whoa, 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 whoa what's happening here could samsung be full of shit it would appear so, and just to prove that... Oh wow, would you look at that, there is the device's protection. Who would have thought Samsung would lie? 
anyway, uh, moving on, we have Google services like location scanning and sending sending user and diagnostic data. You can turn all of those off, but let's be honest, it's Google. It's not like these toggles actually mean a damn. Uh, if they did, Google wouldn't be in lawsuits left and right, uh, antitrust ones and other. So just take those with a grain of salt and I would recommend you taking them as they don't mean shit. Uh, so you might turn them off, uh, for instance, sending user and diagnostic data and they just still will do that. You just won't know about it for the most part, I would, I would say. Uh, additionally, uh, applications and uh, Google have all sorts of other ways of tracking you and your activity. So they might not need this specific thing that is listed right here, but they will still have ways to basically know exactly what you're doing, when you're doing and where you at and all that stuff. Uh, that's how criminals are being found even when they basically take out the SIM card out of their devices and turn off Wi-Fi and all that stuff. And yet, the device still knows exactly where they are. Anyway, uh, moving on, I'm going to disregard this and move to the Samsung services. Now here is something that I will just kind of go on a tangent about and uh, go off the rails. So we have first option and the one that I find the most important, most annoying and one that kind of won't matter soon is the auto blocker. Now auto blocker has couple, uh, you could call them features if you want. Uh, what it does is blocks apps from unverified sources. This is the most annoying thing that it will do. Uh, as previously, when you try to install an app from unknown source, you would get this pop-up on your device basically telling you to enable unknown source uh, sources, which would allow you to install said application. Now, Samsung decided to basically go swing their meat in front of you and block you from doing that by having this enabled by default. And you no longer get that pop-up, you need to manually navigate into the settings, find this dog shit option and turn it off yourself if you want to install a application from unverified source, aka from the internet browser. Um, another thing that it does is blocks commands uh, by USB cable, aka ADB commands, which some people might find use for to use them. I have never managed to have an ADB command trigger on my device without me actually knowing it. So I'm not sure what people actually are doing to have this happen, but whatever. Moving on, another thing that it blocks is malware images and messaging applications. Now this seems like a vulnerability of a messaging application, so uh, that's that's kind of problem number one. And number two, what kind of malware do you ever get in images? Like, I sure shit have never managed to get one, and I, I open up sketchy images all the time. So, yeah. And lastly, block non-official software updates. Now, that one is just moronic. I, if, do people even go for software updates? Like, your device, the, the comical, comical and hypocritical kind of thing right here is the non-official software updates. You know what, I think I trust the unofficial software updates more than the official ones because you end up with Samsung fridges uh, that basically push uh, without your permission or knowledge, bullshit up updates, which then force updates onto your fridge, for instance. Great, because I ever wanted that. And you might have automatic updates turned off. That doesn't mean shit, because it's OTA update. You don't even know it's coming in. You have no control over it not coming in. You can't block it. Samsung will just forcibly push it as long as your device is connected to the network. Same thing goes for this garbage here, and same thing goes for all the other Samsung things. They will deliberately push updates without your permission to your devices to degrade their functionality. They have done that in the past. So honestly, I will trust unofficial updates over the official ones that I haven't ever authorized to come into my device. So uh, turn that absolute dog shit off right away. And additionally, uh, at least do it right now before you get Android like, what is it, 16? which uh, in the future Android 16 will just kind of block all of these options, primarily the unverified source applications uh, without e ever asking you. So uh, any kind of apps that you could ever install from the browser before uh, will no longer be, you will be able to install them with the next, like in the next year, because Android as an operating system will just block that because God ever forbid you take a, away uh, their pie by just blocking ads from applications that would allow you to do that so they needed to go against that and obviously their bullshit excuse is that they're basically trying to make the platform more secure because there's been applications that have malware 
Well, God effing ever forbid you would develop a anti-malware software instead of just blocking something and forcing them to go through strictly your means, aka making a monopoly. So, um, one thing that you can do is just completely block uh, software updates. So I would recommend doing that actually here uh, because any kind of future updates to like Android probably 16 will mean that you can no longer install applications from unverified sources. Therefore, you lose the openness of an Android device. And at that point, you might as well go for an iPhone. So just want to warn you right away here. Uh, as this is something that I personally find more important to me, the freedom of having control over my device. So that's basically what I do on my phone. Anyway, moving on, we have, uh, I'm going back to the lighthearted kind of tone. We have choose your display, light and dark mode. Uh, choose uh, which one you prefer. And this should basically bring us to the end of the setup. Yep, yep, there we go. So let's click on home and there it is. The device now fully set up. So if you found this video helpful, informative, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Yes.